Today, I'm here with you to talk about virtual reality and how what happens inside this headset has the power to change what happens in the real world. By now, I'm guessing that most of you have had some sort of experience with VR before, but for those of you who haven't, it can be hard to imagine how strapping goggles onto your face could possibly make you feel anything except socially awkward. <laughs> Guy's worth a lot of money now. But looks can be deceiving, and how VR appears from the outside can cause people to misjudge the impact that it'll have on our long-term future. The reality is that, even with today's rudimentary technology, people are constantly surprised at how real and how visceral it already feels, and we're only starting to scratch the surface of what's possible. The question that really seems to get people thinking is, what's gonna happen when it gets to be so real, so advanced, that we can no longer <clears throat> tell the difference? But my point today isn't actually about how fast technology is moving, because I think that's something we already know. My point is that over the next five years, we're gonna to have to open up our thinking in completely new ways in order to use these new capabilities and move humanity forward. My name is Thong Nguyen, and over the past few years, I've been applying VR to help companies see and test the future. What this means is that we iterate in VR well before anything is actually ever physically built. And this helps leaders learn faster and also make decisions based not just on intuition, but also empathy and data. In my work, I get to introduce a lot of people to VR for the first time, and what I found is that a lot of people have no idea that it's being used for things other than games and entertainment. But what if I told you that the NFL, NBA, and US Olympic ski team all use VR to train for competition? Or that Ford, BMW, and Volkswagen are using it not only to reinvent the car buying experience, but how they design cars in the first place. Or what if I told you that VR can actually be used to help alleviate stress and anxiety for people suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's? Or that VR is actually a, an alternative to morphine? If any of these are surprising to you, then you're definitely not alone. Um, but I've got a handful of other examples that I wanna share with you today. But before I get into that, let's take a quick step back so we can understand why VR is able to do these things. So a concept that's really important to VR is called presence. Not as in birthday presence, but as in the feeling of being somewhere. It's not something that we really think about on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's our brain's distinct way of telling us that an experience is real and that we're not just looking at a picture or a book. What VR does is activate the motor cortex and our sensory system in a way that's similar to a real life experience. And as an outside observer, you might not be able to see somebody experiencing presence, but what you can see are the physiological and emotional reactions that occur as a result. Now, if any of you have done VR before, you may have felt something like this. Oh my gosh. No. It's too real. And my palms are sweaty. I'll have to go back. No, I don't want to. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh I've got that app if you want it. <laughs> so aside from being able to make people swear and sweat profusely, why is presence important? And how is it actually supposed to help people? Well, that's actually a really interesting question that's bringing together researchers from around the world and across a broad variety of disciplines. As it turns out, something that happens that when we achieve presence in VR is that our brains actually become more accurate at encoding memories. There's been some interesting research from the University of Maryland that shows that there's about a 9% improvement in memory accuracy when learning in VR versus looking at a flat screen. In the meanwhile, 
a study done by Striver, a VR startup, actually shows that recall and response times are improved by 12%. Now, on the surface, those numbers may not seem huge, but in the right situations, that can mean the difference between winning and losing easily. And in extreme circumstances, that could be the difference between life and death. VR also gives people a safe environment to practice things that could be otherwise expensive, risky, or dangerous to replicate. And this could be for anything ranging from operating heavy machinery to practicing life-saving surgery to saving hostages or even prepping for Black Friday. Interestingly enough, the VR training program at Walmart has been so successful that since starting in 2016, they've expanded from using it at 30 of their locations to almost all 200. And the feedback from employees has been nothing but positive. Because of its ability to tap into brain pathways, VR is actually also showing a lot of promise in the fields of cognitive and behavioral therapy. To give you some context, an estimated one in five adults in the United States has some form of diagnosable mental disorder. This not only deeply impacts their lives, but it also impacts the lives of the people around them. And it costs an estimated $467 billion in lost product productivity and medical expenses. And unfortunately, one of the most common solutions that we have today is prescription drugs. Research has shown that in a number of cases, VR can actually be an effective alternative. Through a, a several techniques such as exposure therapy, distraction therapy, neurofeedback, virtual experiences can actually be designed specifically to address a host of conditions, including the ones that you see up here. The progress in some of these areas is definitely further than in some others, but the fact that VR can even be considered as a viable solution for some of these health challenges can't be understated, and it just goes to show that there's still so much we have to learn about the human mind. Needless to say, VR in healthcare is definitely an area to watch. Another topic that's actually really important to VR is called embodiment. But rather than just telling you about it, what would you all think if I showed you instead? Go, go, magic fingers. <laughs> All right. You guys ready? <laughs> Romera, calibrate. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, um, in full disclosure, uh, these gloves use little magnets and accelerometers uh, to detect the position of my fingers. So typically they're really, really accurate, but with all the equipment on stage, there may be some interference. So if for some reason I give you a lewd gesture, <laughs> then please don't be offended. It wasn't me, it was my gloves. So embodiment can be described as the feeling of agency and control that you have within your body. But like presence, it's not something we're typically conscious of on a day-to-day -day basis. And yet it has an enormous impact on the perception of our, the world and ourselves. An example of this is called the rubber hand illusion, which is a simple demonstration that shows how your brain can actually change what it perceives is part of you. And if you haven't seen this before, watch closely really weird. What does it feel like? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm starting to feel like that's my hand. Are you? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh my gosh, what are you gonna do? Oh god. Oh no. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! No! Okay. Oh my god! Okay, that's weird. <laughs> that's really weird. Tell me when you're there. Yeah, I feel it. Feel it? Yeah. Don't look. Oh no. Oh no. No! No, 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 no! Dude! What the hell was that? Yes! Oh, that was so weird. Yeah, it was 
Come on, hand. This hand is feeling really rubbery right now. So, at, uh, all, right. all right, at least it's not like gesturing at you. So my hand's gonna stay there for a second here. Just, yeah. So with VR, researchers are able to do that with not just uh, one limb, but with your entire body. So after a few minutes in VR, your brain starts adapting and thinking that it's your body. For example, studies from the Virtual Human Interaction Lab at Stanford suggest that even brief embodiment inside the avatar of an elderly person has a significant impact on their attitude towards the elderly. A different project from the Columbia University called A Thousand Cut Journey actually lets you experience racism firsthand from the perspective of a black boy as he grows up and experiences unequal treatment through no choice of his own. There's still plenty of learning and ongoing work being done in this space, but one thing is very clear. Embodiment in VR can induce a level of empathy and understanding that's more effective than any other form of communication that we have today. Yet another way that it can help us is to get a better understanding of our own self-perception. So it's pretty well known that people with eating disorders have a persistently distorted representation of the size of their body. But in a study done in 2016, researchers from the Netherlands were actually able to show that by putting people in a healthy-sized avatar, it was possible to decrease the overestimation of their own body size and thus improve their self-body image. Interestingly, it was found that after the headset came off, the changes actually stayed. In yet a different study out of the University of Barcelona, researchers studied the effects of self-counseling in VR and so participants in an avatar that looked like themselves were asked to share some issues that they faced in real life. Then from the perspective of Freud, they would hear the recording played back of themselves. And after responding with advice as Freud, they would then swap back into their own body and hear their own advice played back, but at a lower pitch. So the conclusion from this experiment was that stepping outside of oneself in VR can provide enough of a perspective shift that can foundationally change a person's thinking. And that we do have the ability to take our own advice, but sometimes it's more effective when it's coming from somebody else. <laughs> These types of findings, along with my hand, <laughs> are so important because as many of you know, our own perception and self-image can often be the most difficult thing to overcome. There's still so much work to be done in this space, but it is really exciting to see how VR can enable and accelerate this type of learning. It gives us a tangible way to begin to test and understand the discrepancies between what we think, what we feel, and what we believe we already know. VR can accelerate new insights and help usher change, not through force or coercion, but through the power of perspective. Rumera, exit VR. So today I've shared with you a few examples of how VR is creating real world impacts. But what I'd like to do is end with a personal story. As a kid, I used to love reading choose your own adventure books. And for those of you who have never read them before, there are these paperback books that allow you to make choices while you read and assume the role of the protagonist. And each one of these choices can cause the story to change in any number of ways. These choices could be anything like open the door and step through or turn around and go the other way. What I would do when I was reading these as a kid was go through and mark all the pages that had, change, uh, that had choices <laughs> so that I could follow the branches and understand the impact of my decisions. Back then I was just thrilled because I felt like I was getting 40 books for the price of one. <laughs> But in reality, what I was doing was testing all my options so I could achieve the best outcome. We all choose our own adventures every day. But sometimes the choices that we make are based on what's happened in the past. And that can prevent us from really, really, really finding our own futures. 
And unlike books, many of our stories still have yet to be written. But what would happen if VR allowed us to experience and try out different futures? And what if we had the ability, not just conceptually, but to virtually walk a mile in somebody else's shoes? And how will our lives change when we can see our own minds, our own egos, and our own vulnerabilities from a different perspective? Because what happens inside this headset will change the world. Thank you.